and it's a good Sunday morning. Welcome to Church of the Total Man, a church for men. Today, we are in Proverbs chapter 21. So get a Bible, get a cup of coffee, or just sit back and enjoy and learn from the wisdom of the ages. The king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he will. Does God actually influence world rulers? Sometimes I think not. Sometimes I think so. Overall, the last man standing is the Lord. So in a sense, we look at things in the light of our lifetime. God views things in the light of eternity. So a king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord. Can we pray that God moves a king's hand or a leader's hand. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't think there is anything extreme about asking God to change the heart of a leader. If that's something that is on your heart, I think that is certainly possible. I also think it's important that we pray for our leaders at every level, whether it be local level or state or national, or even world level. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the heart. We always think we're right, don't we? Sometimes we are. Sometimes we aren't. But the ultimate measure of whether it's right is what God says and how he approves. And does he provide the means? I heard a little phrase years ago that said, where God guides he provides. Cute little phrase, right? But is it true? Will God give you what you need to move in the direction that you need to go? Whether it be a goal, whether it be your career, whether it be a dream, whether it be a ministry, will the means for operating those things be provided by God? Will they miraculously come into your life? Will God bring people into your life to help you achieve those things that will help people? a great question, right? To do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Obeying is better than sacrifice. My Lord, you can sacrifice all you want. Write checks, put money in an offering plate, support things with money. But what does God really want? He wants us. He wants our hearts to do the right thing. Because it's easy just to It's easy just to sacrifice, isn't it? For many people, that's easy. But to actually roll your sleeves up and practice righteousness and justice is much better and more acceptable in God's sight. Haughty eyes and a proud heart, the lamp of the wicked are sin. Prideful eyes, proud heart, arrogant heart, the lamp of the wicked are sin. The plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty comes only to poverty. Stop, think, breathe, act. Be diligent, and you will have abundance. Do things in haste, quickly, without thinking, without planning, and you are going to have poverty. This is almost like a business plan right here, isn't it? The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a fleeting vapor and a snare of death. Stolen goods taste sweet, but are they good for you in the long run? The violence of the wicked will sweep them away. If you live by the sword, you die by the sword. If you use violence to manipulate people and threats, then that very same manipulation and threat type of lifestyle will also be practiced on you by someone else. You do give, when you give a certain way, act a certain way, it does come back to you. And I'm not trying to be woo-woo about it, but the reality is if we're merciful to people, we will receive mercy. If we are just bad to people, bad-mouthing them, we're not treating them well in person or online 
or in business, it might not happen right away, but it does come back to you. The violence of the wicked will sweep them away. They almost get swept away by their own violence because they refuse to do what is just. The way of the guilty is crooked, but the conduct of the pure is upright. An observation, it is better to live in a corner of a housetop than in a house shared with a quarrelsome wife. Or in your garage, your basement, your deck. Nothing can wear a man out like a quarrelsome wife. How do you deal with that? It says here it's better just to live on a housetop, the corner of a housetop. In other words, let's look at the big picture. When it comes to a quarrelsome wife, it's better just to keep your distance. The farthest place that a man could go in his home was up on the roof in a far corner. Distance isn't a bad thing when it comes to relationship issues. Learn how to create distance. I used to say that distance creates desire, but in this scenario, distance also will bring a man peace. Remember I said a man settles where he has peace? If that peace is on the corner of a roof, or in a garage, or a basement, or a man cave, or a tool shed, then that's a beautiful thing. Many men pretend that they have hobbies and tasks in those places, the garages, the basements, the sheds. Are they really there because of their hobby, or are they there because there's a quarrelsome wife? The soul of the wicked desires evil. His neighbors find no mercy in his eyes. When a scoffer is punished, the simple become wise. When a wise man is instructed, he gains knowledge. Part of being wise, part of listening to and benefiting from the wisdom of the ages here, is that when you are instructed, you gain knowledge. What are people and what is life trying to teach you? The soul of the wicked desires evil, and his neighbor finds no mercy in his eyes. Are you continually learning? Whoever closes his ear to the cry of the poor will himself call out and not be answered. Again, getting what you've given. If you've given nothing, there will be no mercy shown to you. A gift in secret averts anger and a concealed bribe, strong wrath. Meeting with somebody before Crap hits the fan. Settling matters privately and quietly is not a bad technique. Calling somebody and say, hey, can we chat before we get to court? Hey, can we chat? I know we're going to see each other tonight. Can we just have a little meeting and talk? Because I don't want to get into it, and I don't think it would be wise. I don't think it's a good look. That happened with me once. There was a guy that was talking some stuff about me. And I found out he was on the speaker's list of the same place where I was going to speak. And it was in our best interest and in the best interest of the audience that he and I get together. He and I had talked a couple times prior to an event that could have been pretty heated. And we settled matters. And we are now friends, actually. I trust him. He trusts me. If he called me for anything, I'd help him out, and vice versa. But I think it's important. How can you settle matters before they go public? When justice is done, it is a joy to the righteous, but terror to evil doers. One who wanders from the way of good sense will rest in the assembly of the dead. Hang out with people that are life givers, not life takers. Or people that suck the life out of you. Time wasters, men or women. 
One who wanders from the way of good sense will rest in the assembly of the dead. It can even lead to death. Bad decisions can lead to death. Whoever loves pleasure will be a poor man. He who loves wine and oil will not be rich. Don't be given to alcohol and drugs and substances and things that will make you just sit around on the couch, sit around in the chair, sleep. Whoever loves pleasure will be a poor man. There's a time to relax, but here it's talking about if that relaxation and pleasure is the result of, if it's chemically induced, you're going to be broke. It's not good sense. The wicked is a ransom for the righteous and a traitor for the upright. It is better to live in a desert land than with a quarrelsome and fretful woman. Hmm. Wasn't that long ago that it was talking about better to live on the housetop in the corner of a roof. Now it's saying it's better to live in a desert with a quarrelsome and fretful woman. Quarrelsome? Okay. You know what that means. But here it says, fretful, a worrying woman. Women who worry can wear you out. Do you have a woman that worries in your life? Worries about how the bills are going to get paid. Worries about kids. Worries about this and that. And then what? And then argues about it. What's your desert land? Is it a basement? Is it a garage? Is it a shed? Is it your muscle car? Is it your motorcycle? It's talking about how men escape quarrelsome women, wives. First one said it's better to live in a corner on a housetop than in a house shared by a quarrelsome wife. This one says a quarrelsome and fretful woman. Not just a wife, just a woman that wants to argue with you. Better to be in a desert. Did you ever do things by yourself rather than want to sit around and just listen to bep, 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 right? Like a bird pecking at you. Henpecked, we used to say. He's so henpecked. It's better to live in a desert than to be henpecked. Precious, precious treasure and oil are a wise man's dwelling, but a foolish man devours it. You save your money, you save your resources, and then you can rest later. Work now, rest later. But if you enjoy all the spoils of your labor and the spoils of war now, you're not going to have a roof over your head. Whoever pursues righteousness and kindness will find life, righteousness, and honor. Righteousness and kindness, doing the right thing, and the execution of it is done with kindness. Are you a kind person? If you're a single man, don't you look for kind people? A wise man scales the city of the mighty and brings down the stronghold in which they trust. Whoever keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. Again, our mouths get us into trouble. Our words, not just our hands and feet, taking us to places where they shouldn't be going, but our mouths get us into trouble. If anyone has ever been to court, you know every word that comes out of your mouth can either help you or hurt you. If you've ever been arrested in the United States, I don't know how it is in other countries, there's a thing called the Miranda Warning. Anything you say can or will be used against you in a court of law. You do have the right to remain silent everywhere in life because your words can get you into trouble. Whoever keeps his mouth and tongue keeps himself out of trouble. Exercise that right to be silent. Scoffer is the name of the arrogant, uh, prideful, haughty man who acts with arrogant pride. Scoffer. 
That's a word that we don't use much today. He's a scoffer, arrogant man, prideful man. Acts with arrogant pride. That's interesting. That's kind of like there's pride and there's arrogance, but it says arrogant pride. That's like pride on steroids, arrogant pride. For a minute there, I thought there was redundance, but what it's really showing is there's a next level pride. Not a good thing. The desire of the sluggard kills him, for his hands refuse to labor, again being lazy. You won't get any rewards. I do not, I do not envy or covet what other people have. The only thing that I covet is their work ethic. When I see a beautiful car, a driveway with some nice vehicles in it, when I see a big house, when I see a house on a waterway, on a bay, a river, on the ocean, a lake, I don't get jealous of them. I think to myself, what do they do? Do you ever do that? Do you ever look at like a nice house in a nice neighborhood and you think to yourself, what do these people do for a living? Like, don't be envious of them. Covet the skills that they have. Like, what did you do to get this? There's a lot of YouTube channels about that. How did you make your money? You ever see those channels? A young man goes up to a guy that's in like a really nice car. How did you make your money? And people are so willing to tell you how things work and what you need to do. And especially during that time, let me just reel it back a couple verses here. We need to exercise the right to remain silent and do nothing but listen. The desire of the sluggard kills him, for his hands refuse to labor. All day long he craves and craves, but the righteous gives and does not hold back. Lazy people want, righteous people give. Sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination, how much more when he brings it with evil intent. A false witness will perish, but the word of a man who hears will endure. Liars don't make it in this world. When you lie, you have to just keep remembering a story. When you tell the truth, you got to remember one thing. A wicked man puts on a bold face, but the upright gives thought to his ways. Be a contemplative man. Are you contemplative? In other words, think. Did your father ever say to you, Use your head. Stop, breathe, think, then act. Somebody should make a t-shirt that says, Stop, breathe, think. No wisdom, no understanding, no counsel can avail against the Lord. The horse is made ready for the day of battle, but the victory belongs to the Lord. I struggle with that sometimes because I think about like determinism and fatalism. That things are going to happen anyways. Why even try if things are going to end up with a certain outcome no matter what I do? It is better to obey than to sacrifice. You do the right thing. God takes care of the conclusion, the outcome. You're not necessarily judged on the outcome of your scenario. You're judged on were you obedient during that time when you were preparing. Remain faithful, my brother. Do the right thing. That was chapter 21 of Proverbs. Next week we will be in Proverbs chapter 22 on Church of the Total Man, a church for men. Thank you for attending today.